Hey guys, this is Nathan, and I'm back for the first time after I think about six months, which is insane. First of all, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I know I'm a little bit late, but I was really busy during the holidays, and I've been working really hard to make this video. There's a few things that I want to talk about because a lot happened when I was gone, and I just want to share it with you guys. I also want to share my thoughts on some issues relating to the LEGO community, and uh, let's get into it. I only did one LEGO creation in the entire year, and I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out, but usually I do have a lot of different creations, and even though I did try making another one, it was kind of a fail. I made a video on that, it was actually my last video. And yeah, so let's recap a little bit. To be honest, the first few months of 2019 were a little bit weird. Just a little bit. But then things got interesting. And in order to explain what happened, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of recap. As some of you know, I live on an island. About two years ago, back in late 2017, the island was completely destroyed by a hurricane. And it was terrible, and even though things are kind of back to normal, even though we did get a lot of help, and we kind of managed to fix our infrastructure, it's still very broken, and we got power about six months after it happened, but there's still a lot of people that have their caved in roofs because they can't afford to fix it, or because they just simply can't. And um, a lot of people are still experiencing power outages because of our unreliable infrastructure. And our governor, who was getting a lot of money, more like stealing a lot of money, um, he didn't really care about it. And he started to joke about it online with his friends and started a group chat where he basically trash talked the entire island. Fortunately, somebody thought it was terrible and they took a screenshot and sent it to pretty much everyone. And the people got mad, really mad. So we went to the governor's house and we told him how we felt and we asked him to resign. Unfortunately, because he was getting so much money, he was going to resign and well, things got a little bit crazy. We essentially went to the streets and expressed our feelings towards the governor and it went kind of bad. We sort of got kicked out by the government's evil forces. Things got pretty chaotic. But we came back with about a million people and we took to the streets and we did the biggest manifestation the island has ever seen in its entire history. Unfortunately, it started raining a lot. And I got drenched and I lost all my stuff. So it was kind of a bummer, but in the end, the governor decided to resign and he got replaced and the replacement got replaced really fast and corruption was destroyed for about five minutes. I guess it all kind of worked out in the end. There's still a lot of problems with the island's infrastructure and government, but hopefully we'll be able to fix it one day. Since I lost all my stuff, it meant that I couldn't record YouTube videos. So I sort of caught up on some reading. You guys should really check out the C.S. Lewis Cosmic Trilogy, it's really cool. And I also started getting involved with the local music scene. Eventually, I got all of my stuff back. And, uh... I guess I'm back! Maybe. You see, while I was gone, there was a lot of changes on YouTube. And, uh, I'm pretty sure you all know about the whole COPPA thing. So I won't get into it, but essentially, to make a long story short, um, YouTube decided that, well, it wasn't YouTube, they kind of got in trouble with the United States government, and uh, they both decided that they were gonna change how stuff works on YouTube. And uh, if you're a content creator, you need to mark your videos as made for kids or as not made for kids. And if you mark them as made for kids, your comments are gonna get disabled and it's terrible. And uh, it seems pretty straightforward. 
If you don't want your comments disabled, then just simply don't mark your videos as if they were made for kids, right? Well, unfortunately, YouTube is going to be deciding that on their own, so they're going to have an entire algorithm just for that, which is basically going to go to all your videos and decide whether or not they are videos for kids. A lot of people were freaking out about it because they were talking about a fine, an insanely big fine, but the fact of the matter is that they aren't going to fine everyone. You're not going to get fined for making Lego videos in your bedroom, you know. I think that the entire issue was caused regarding other larger YouTubers that were kind of abusing the whole thing. Um, it's kind of unrelated, but you can look into the whole Elsa Gate conspiracy. Um, regardless, in the new list of requirements that YouTube released to judge whether or not stuff are for kids, they mention toys. Lego is a toy, so a lot of people are freaking out, and rightly so. And the future of the Lego community on YouTube is kind of uncertain on this platform. That's the point. There's two kinds of people in the world creators and collectors, and to be honest, the LEGO community is both. We're all tied to LEGO one way or another, whether it be all the LEGO sets we used to have as kids, or whether we really wanted to try LEGO for the first time as adults and thought it was a brilliant way of expressing our thoughts, and how collecting LEGO sets and minifigures just makes us feel like our younger selves, in a way. Whichever it be, we're all artists here, and the beauty of art is that it doesn't know any bounds. It doesn't matter what social media we're on, or what evil corporate overlord tries to take over, it's about how, as long as LEGO exists, we're gonna be a community. And this isn't the first time the online LEGO community had to jump ship. A while back, Flickr was overturned by their new owner, SmugMug, and a lot of people lost their photos, and many were prevented from ever uploading again, including myself. And what did we do? We switched over to somewhere else, as long as we have any kind of voice online, we're always going to be a strong community. And until the very end, we'll all keep sharing and expressing our passion for one of the coolest things in history. My point? I'm not quitting YouTube because of Kappa. My videos aren't made for little kids. They're made for anyone who likes them. That being said, most of the people who watch my videos aren't children. Regardless, I'm marking them as not for kids. I recommend everyone watch Jang Brick's video on the issue. He covers a lot of important points that I'm just not mentioning, and he has a really interesting take on it. If you want more information, you should check out his video. But at the end of the day, like I said earlier, if you're just a guy making mock videos, Cobb isn't going to find you for it. The least we can do is just keep sending our videos as not intended for children, and if YouTube disagrees, they can change it themselves. That's what they said they're going to do. If they disagree, they're gonna set it back to what they think is its appropriate rating. And uh, that way we can find out how seriously they're trying to do this whole thing. I might be wrong, but I think things here on YouTube will be kind of okay for the most part. And if it isn't, I'll see you guys on Instagram. Instagram's becoming a pretty cool place for the low community. And with Instagram stories and IGTV, the app or the site offers a bunch of ways to share our content. The Instagram logo community is growing pretty rapidly, so I want to suggest you guys to make an Instagram account and start sharing Lego there. And we can add any hashtags we want and we can find a post that way. It's really cool and a lot of people are switching over to Instagram, and rightly so. Um, I have a feeling that the Instagram Lego community is going to be the next generation's Flickr Lego community. That is, if it isn't already. Something else I wanted to say is that you guys should really check out Nick on Planet Ripple. He has an amazing Lego series called Lego Rewind, where he takes a look at a ton of different Lego themes and goes in-depth into the ideological development of each individual theme. Seriously check out his videos. They're basically a historical archive of some really awesome information on LEGO. I learned a lot from watching it, and I found out about some LEGO themes I hadn't heard of before, and a bunch of facts that as a long-term LEGO fan, I just hadn't heard of before. So I'll put a link to the LEGO Rewind Show playlist in the description. Again, check it out, it's really cool. I also want to take a minute to mention some people from Flickr. 
if some of you don't remember or if, if some of you don't know what Flickr is, it's a photo sharing site that used to be a community for photographers and content creators. It was really cool and the little community on Flickr thrived for a very long time. Back when I got into the online Lego community as a whole, I started on Flickr and it was awesome. Some of the people I met aren't active anymore, which is unfortunate, but they were all a part of my experience as a Lego fan when I joined Flickr. They helped me out a lot and they inspired me to become a better builder and they were just really encouraging. It was a really nice community, a really nice environment to be a Lego fan in. Not to mention that I made some really good friends on Flickr and some of them are still really great friends to this day. And even though since the Smug Mug incident, Flickr kind of lost its importance in a way, a lot of people still use it, but it's just not the same thing, unfortunately. Um, I think that it really has to go down as one of the most important things in the entire history of the LEGO community because it did bring a lot of people together and it helped form a lot of the traditions that we have as a community. Before I wrap up, I just want to take a moment to appreciate LEGO as a whole and what it's been for me for the past 20 years because it's the end of the decade and we're officially 20 years into the new millennium and I think that's really cool. LEGO's gone through a lot of changes in the past 20 years and honestly sets have gotten way more realistic and better overall. Even though I do have some issues with how LEGO is handling some themes nowadays and although nothing will ever be the classics, I'm looking forward to seeing what LEGO has planned for the future and honestly these are uncertain times and there's a lot of change but LEGO's always changed, you know? Things have always changed. There's even a few times when we thought it was the end, but it wasn't. It was just the beginning of a new era. And who knows how many eras we're gonna have in our lifetime, you know? Um, stuff could change, and we might not like some of that change, but in the end, things might just work out. Also, I kind of talked about this earlier, but I just want to mention how we as LEGO fans are artists. You know, sometimes we might get discouraged, sometimes we might forget why we even like LEGO, but at the end of the day, whether we're collecting LEGO or whether we're using it to make creations, make mocks, we're all artists and LEGO is a really wonderful thing that gave all of us a way to express ourselves and something to enjoy, you know, as a kid. They let us be creative, they let us build our own toys. We could literally build anything we wanted and that was really cool. And whatever it be, whatever that sparked your imagination as a kid, whatever got you into being a LEGO fan, whether it be making your own mocks, you know, creating your own creations, collecting minifigures, doing fig barfs, um, making custom minifigures, making custom Lego parts, making Lego sculptures, making your own custom sets, collecting Lego sets, collecting minifigures, making a clone army, making your huge castles, whether you be into cyberpunk, uh, science fiction, Star Wars, medieval Lego, um, fantasy Lego, whatever it be. Lego is one of the greatest ways we can express ourselves because some of us can't draw some of us can't write music some of us aren't good at writing and i think that universally lego is something that can just spark our imagination and if we think about it we can build it so LEGO is really cool and it's our job as LEGO fans to make sure that the next generation it's our job to teach them about LEGO to help them and inspire them to become builders one day and I think that that's a really nice thing. That being said, I hope that you all had a very happy holiday season and I hope that you have a great New Year's. Hopefully 2020 will be awesome 
and full of a bunch of great creations as every year is. Not to mention that we're starting the 2020s. So that means that in 30 years, when somebody says the 20s, they're going to be referring to the 2020s, not the 1920s. So that's something to consider. Um, and yeah, I hope that it's a great decade for all of us, honestly. So with that being said, look forward to more videos in the future. I'm going to try to survive the whole COPPA incident. And even if I can't, just go over to my Instagram. I'm always going to be there and... As long as I'm alive, as long as I have internet access, I'm going to be a part of the online Lego community. And, and I'm pretty much going to keep making mocks till the day of that. So yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully I'll be able to make a lot of mocks in 2019. We all have our favorite Lego themes and media that makes us feel extra nostalgic. So I'll leave you off with a compilation of some of my personal Lego nostalgia. Or just stuff that I really liked or really sparked my imagination as a kid growing up in the first 20 years of the new millennial. And I'll see you all next time. There'll be nothing but rubble on the face of the earth. Uh, what's going on? Don't know, but our underground task force are many miles below the surface. Give the granite grinder all you got. Yeah, we're through. These caves are huge. Hey, what's that? It's a crystal of some sort. Uh. Rock monster! See that? We're on our way. Let's go, boys. Come on, come on. Let's get that double gear drill on the Thunder Driller. Planetary drill locked in. Claw digger, crystal sweeper, Thunder Driller. All systems go. Yeah! Power miners rolling out to the rescue. <laughs> hey, where are you going with that dynamite? Just a little trip outside. New from Lego Star Wars. The Clone Wars rage on, and the Jedi need your help. You can build the Ark 170, load the clone pilots, arm the rockets, open the wings to attack position, and blast off to join the fight. Watch out! Droid TIE Fighters are in pursuit with the Ark 170. You control the battle. The all new Star Wars collection. Each set sold separately. Lego City, a truck has broken down in the middle of the road. The road rescue tow truck is needed. Hey! You can build the road rescue tow truck and drive to the rescue. You can pick up the truck, tow it back to the garage, park the truck, operate the crane, change the tire, and get it back on the road. The new road rescue garage from Lego City. <laughs> The chase is on, and the fate of the Jedi is in your hands. With the new LEGO Star Wars Republic gunship, you can deploy the fighters, gear up for battle, and blast off into action to take on the enemy. The air battle has begun, and you control the action. With the new LEGO Star Wars collection, each set sold separately. New from Lego Atlantis, divers found the key to the gateway of the squid. Watch out, the giant squid's awake, and it has razor-sharp teeth. You can build the massive Neptune sub. Gear up. Prepare your deep-sea units. Dive into action and blow the squid out of the water. Ah, we got it! Lego Atlantis, each set sold separately. Lego City, a ship has wrecked, hey! and the new rescue helicopter is needed. Hey, 
you can build the rescue helicopter. Take off from the new Coast Guard headquarters and start the rescue operation. You can use the automatic winch, make the rescue, fly to the rescue ship and save lives. The new Coast Guard collection from Lego City. Each set sold separately. <laughs> New from Lego Atlantis, divers found the key to the gateway of Atlantis. Watch out! The giant shark guards the key. Diver 1, requesting backup. You can build the Typhoon Turbo Sub and get back the treasure key. You can speed into action. Transform to attack mode. Load the missile. Fire! Yes! We got it! Lego Atlantis. Each set sold separately. New from Lego Racers. The race is on! You can customize your ultimate street racer in the new Tuna Workshop. Guess up your hot rod and join the race. Only the best of the best will make it on the highway and win the big race. From Lego Space Police, the intergalactic bank has been robbed. Build your Space Police cruiser. Blast off at hyperspeed. Chase down the space crook. And stop him in his tracks. In space, crime doesn't pay. Freeze, mister. <laughs> the new collection from Lego Space Police. Each set sold separately. New from Lego Racers, the race has hit the streets. As the police, you are ready to chase down the rogue racers. You can join the high-speed pursuit, blaze through the streets, and take racing to a new level. Dare you face the challenge? Street Extreme, a new racing experience from Lego Racers. Also available from Lego Racers, three different unfolding playsets. New from Lego Space Police, the prison is under attack. Build the Galactic Enforcer and capture the alien crook. Look out! His gang is here to break him loose. They are making their getaway. Stop the jailbreak and put the aliens behind bars. In space, crime doesn't pay. The new collection from Lego Space Police, each set sold separately. Anakin Skywalker and R2-D2 have infiltrated a Separatist base. With a very important secret stored inside the droid, they barely escape. But they are pursued, and R2 is lost somewhere in deep space. Undaunted, the Separatist leaders swear to recover the secret. Back on Coruscant, Obi-Wan orders Anakin and Ahsoka to find R2-D2 and his very important content.
Chancellor Palpatine sends an elite squad of troopers to do the same. Yes, sir. And so begins the quest for R2-D2. Traversing the reaches of space and time. Four explorers brought together in their search for a unique and precious element. Together they roam the darkest corners of the universe until one fateful day they arrived at a most unusual world, the fabled planet Crooks. Detecting a powerful source of energy, the four explorers were jubilant. They had finally found what they were looking for. They quickly descended upon an ancient temple, a relic of the mythical first builders. Inside was the imagination nexus, the long lost source of pure imagination. My name is Jamie, and I'm a designer for Creator and Lego Direct. All right, start your engines. We're ready to ride. Welcome to Cool Car, Creator Cool Car. This is one of our favorite sets in Creator. It's got lots of cool functions. You got doors that open up. You got a trunk that opens up. You can go back and forth. But there's one thing that it can't do, and that's steer. If I push it, it always goes forward. If I go backwards, it always goes backwards. And you can't go back and forth without hearing those tires streaking because I'm kind of pushing them where they don't want to go. To solve that, you can do two things. One is you can make a really cool Technic frame. This has lots of gears, it's got lots of axles, and you can have full control over it. Very cool, very neat, but a little bit difficult to build. Some of you guys maybe don't want anything that complicated. So I'm going to show you a cool trick. <laughs> A sketch model is the very first version of a new LEGO model. The designers build sketch models to get an impression of the model size and to try out different functions that can be built into the model. The LEGO Technic motto is, 
authenticity, functionality and challenging building. Authenticity is um, that we try to build a replica of the real stuff. Kids can easily decode the model. If I build a bulldozer, it's a bulldozer. And if I build a truck, it looks like a truck. Functionality is that we try to define the functions of the model, which are the key functions. If you have a bulldozer, for example, it's a blade which goes up and down. Challenging building is, because we work in technique for the older kids, we have a lot of bricks. We have a real lot of bricks. Like this model has 1,500 bricks. It's not so easy like uh, system building, where you put bricks on bricks on bricks. We build in all directions, and this makes it challenging for the kids to build. Authenticity, functionality, and challenging building. This is the very soul of Lego Technik, something we must never forget. Thank <laughs> you. 